Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in today's part 61, we will extend our knowledge about improper Riemann integrals. In particular, we will talk about the comparison test for integrals. For this, please recall, we've already discussed improper Riemann integrals, where the area between the graph of the function and the x-axis stretches to infinity. Therefore, you might recognize here that this is related to a series where we add infinitely many terms. Indeed, in both cases we could have convergence or divergence. And you might remember, for series we have something we call the comparison test. We also know this as the major end criterion or the minor end criterion. And now it turns out, we find exactly the same thing for the improper Riemann integrals. Therefore, I would say, let's immediately put this into a theorem. Hence, this theorem you can call the comparison test for improper integrals. So what we need are two functions f and g, where f is the function we consider, and g should be the major end or minor end. Therefore, g should be a non-negative function. This means g of x is greater than 0 for all x. And of course, as in the last video, the domain should be given as an interval from a to infinity. Here in the picture you see we start with 0, but you could start with any other point a. The only important thing is that both functions are Riemann integrable when we restrict them to a bounded domain. More precisely, g restricted to ab and f restricted to ab should be Riemann integrable. So you see, this is the same assumption as we had it in the last video. Ok, then let us formulate the comparison test. In the first part, we consider that g is a major end for f. In other words, g of x should always be greater or equal than f of x. However, since f could have negative values, we have to consider the absolute value of f. And now of course, this should hold for all points in the domain. And then we have the following implication. If this integral of g converges, then we can conclude that also the integral of f converges. In fact, this is not hard to prove when you know how to work with limits. And if you want, you can go back to part 19 and compare this to the major and criterion for series. And then you should see all the similarities. And moreover, the next second part you can compare to the minor end criterion. For this we need the inequality the other way around. And of course, there we don't need the absolute value, because g is already non-negative. Ok, and now you might already see, this should be a statement about divergence. More precisely, we can conclude, if this integral is not convergent, then neither is this one. There's simply no way that this area can be finite when the smaller one is not. Ok, then I would say, let's look at an example. And indeed, for the minor end criterion, you can often use the function 1 over x. There, you just have to know that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x is not convergent. This is not hard to see, because you know an antiderivative of 1 over x. It's simply given by the natural logarithm. Therefore, for a positive number b, this integral is exactly log of b. And now you just have to know what happens to the logarithm when the argument goes to infinity. And indeed, the logarithm also expands to infinity. In the sense, you could say this integral here is infinity. Hence, 1 over x is a good minor end to check for divergence. So let's try it for the function x divided by x squared plus 1. So the question is, is this integral convergent or divergent? And from the things I said before, you might already guess we will show divergence. And indeed, you should see, for a very large x, this function is almost 1 over x. Or to formulate it more precisely, we could say that if we multiply the function with x, 
then we would be able to cancel the x squared. Or in other words, we have 1 plus 1 over x squared in the denominator. Therefore, if we send x to infinity, this whole thing goes to 1. In summary, this function here in the limit looks like 1 over x. However, of course, the limit is not enough. We need a concrete minor end function. But the important thing now is that we can construct one. Namely, this limit here tells us that eventually this whole thing here is greater than 1 half. And here, please recall, eventually means that we find a bound such that after this bound it holds for all numbers x that are greater than this bound. Please note, here it's only important what happens eventually. Ok, and then we can reformulate the inequality and find that our function here is always greater or equal than 1 half times 1 over x. And there, we already know, the function on the right hand side with the integral will give us divergence. In other words, we can apply the theorem from above, where the upper limit here is capital R. So writing this down, we see this integral starting with R is divergent. And there you see, applying the minor n theorem is not hard at all, when you can produce such an inequality here. Therefore, the only question that remains now is, do we also have divergence when we put in 1 as the lower limit here? And the answer is, of course we have. This is clear when you see that the difference between both integrals here can only be a finite number. Simply because it's the ordinary Riemann integral from 1 to r. Which is, as you know, well defined and finite. Therefore, in summary, this integral is convergent if and only if this integral is convergent. And with this we are finished, we have answered this question here. No, this integral is not convergent. Ok, now we know the comparison test for integrals. And indeed, another connection to series we will discuss in the next video. So I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.